Hi, welcome to the 14-day weather forecast. It's mild at the moment, but it looks as though things will be changing significantly as we head towards the end of October and into the early part of November. I'll begin by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The sequence runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 26th. At the outset, a mild southwesterly flows covering most of the UK and in the northwest here, there are heavy outbreaks of rain shown by the yellow and orange shading. In the short term, it continues to rain in the northwest and parts of the west. There could be some large totals, which I'll come back to in a moment. Then, as we go through Friday, the risk of rain probably begins to extend southwards and eastwards. You can see some yellow shading there over central and eastern England, indicating the risk of some heavier bursts of rain for a time. But it's through the weekend that things do start to change more notably. What we can see by Sunday on this particular sequence is a nasty looking area of low pressure moving upwards across the UK and that's bringing some very, very heavy bursts of rain to much of England and Wales. Also on its southern flank there's a likelihood of strong winds. I'll look at that as well in a little bit more detail shortly. That area of low pressure pulls away into the early part of next week and then things begin to show signs for change. Winds go into a north or a northwesterly direction and cold air begins feeding southwards. See the snow up there to the north of the UK, also the white shading over high ground in Scotland indicating the potential there for some sleet or snow showers. In the south at this point it's not so cold and there's still a risk of showers or longer spells of rain. Having said that, it will be colder than it has been in the preceding days. So just to take a look at the upper air temperature progression through that sequence, this is on Wednesday the 27th of October. Yellows and oranges there across much of England and Wales. Greens indicating somewhat cooler air over Scotland there, but generally it's a very mild picture for the time of the year. Moving forwards to Saturday the 30th and the yellows and oranges have now gone. They've been replaced by greens across all areas so it's cooler. It's not cold at this point, it's just closer to the average. Jumping forwards again to Wednesday the 3rd of November, this is where things really do have the potential to uh, begin changing markedly. We can see this very cold air to the north of the UK shown by the blues there. The darker the blue, the lower the upper air temperature is. And that's filtering southwards. Although, as I noted earlier, at this point it's still not particularly cold in southern and central regions. We've still got the light green shading there close to the area of low pressure. So there's a decreasing uh, trend in upper air temperatures and how that manifests itself down at the ground level. Well, here's 15 GMT Wednesday the 27th. It's very, very mild really for late October values there in East Anglia, 18 Celsius. It's a few degrees cooler as you go northwards, but all in all, temperatures well above where they should be. Jumping forwards to Saturday the 30th, this is where the upper air is becoming cooler. Now what we're seeing is maximum values in the south, 14, 15 Celsius, several degrees cool once again as you head northwards. So it's becoming closer to the seasonal norm. Now moving forwards to Tuesday, November the 2nd, what we see is in the south temperatures are 10, 11 Celsius. Remember these are forecast maximums. And again, as you go northwards, it's several degrees cooler. So down into single figures across the northern half of the UK with the potential for that cold air to sink further southwards in the days which follow. So as well as wet, I mentioned that there is a possibility of it becoming windy uh, on several days through the first week. I'm just going to use a couple of charts here to illustrate. So the first one, Wednesday the 27th, 21 GMT. At this point we can see wind speed gusts of over 50 miles per hour affecting Western coastal counties, it's windy there across northern England too, and it's fairly windy even in southern and central regions. So, as I say, that's just one, one example chart. The other one I was going to use, I'm going to use is for Sunday the 31st, but here there is a good deal of uncertainty. We've got that area of low pressure deepening and moving probably northeastwards across the uh, southern half of the UK. 
strongest winds on its southern flank. So here we can see values of 40 miles an hour across much of uh, southern England, central England, and potentially gale force around these Welsh coasts here and along the south coast of England too. There is uncertainty about that, and what I'm able to show you here is the ensemble plot from the uh, UK Met Office MOGREPS model. It's the first time I've been able to use one of these charts, and it's showing the forecast wind gust speeds for London uh, between the 26th of October and the 3rd of November. And I think the period in question is, is the first weekend, so between the 29th to the 31st of, of October, maybe the 1st of November. So what we can see is that there are several runs in the ensemble which are going for very windy conditions in the London area. They are in, in a minority, but three or four of them are going for over 50 mile an hour gusts. There are 18 runs plotted on this uh, chart. So you can see it's about 20, 25% of those very, very windy conditions developing. Most of the runs are keeping it not so bad, still, still pretty windy, but lower maximum gust speeds. So that's a more likely scenario, I think, at the moment, possibly suggesting that that low pressure is going to be tracking far enough southwards to keep the strongest winds to the south of London, maybe over the English Channel into northern France. But as I say, it does need watching closely because there is just that potential for it to turn stormy in parts of southern England, maybe even central England, through this period. Now, rainfall. These GFS charts are displaying accumulated rainfall. The one on the left is for days 0 to 5, the one on the right, days 0 to 10. The key things to note really are that in the short term, the wettest conditions are expected to be in Western Britain. The orange shading over northwestern England is indicating totals in excess of 100 millimetres. Looking at the 10 day period as a whole, the chart on the right, the wettest conditions are still shown to be in the west, but by then, all parts of the UK have had significant amounts of rain. Remember though, these charts are just a snapshot generated from one model run, so take them with a pinch of salt, particularly the one on the right, the 0 to 10 days period. So with the GFS model suggesting a transition to colder conditions towards the end of the first week, at least in the north, do the other deterministic models support that evolution? Just to recap, here is the GFS on Tuesday, November the 2nd. By then, colder air is beginning to filter southwards, high pressures building in the mid-Atlantic. The Canadian model is similar at the same time. Low pressure here to the east of Scotland, high pressure to the west, a northwesterly flow moving down across the country. Not particularly cold by any means at this point, but the potential for temperatures to drop further ahead. The German icon model, also broadly consistent, colder air moving down from the north, low pressure pulling away to the northeast. The European ECM, also going for something very similar. On this, if anything, high pressure is starting to build more strongly northwards towards Greenland, and potentially that's setting up a more persistent cold pattern further down the line. Finally, the UK Met Office. Once more, it's a similar story. I'd say this is a diluted version of the ECM in many ways. The pressure gradients seem weaker. Nonetheless, we have the high pressure here in the Atlantic, low pressure to the east of the UK, the potential for colder air to be moving down from the Arctic. I think taking all those deterministic models together, there's good support for a change to a cooler or colder pattern by the end of the first week. Um, whether or not the cold air from the north will have reached down to Scotland or further south by that point, I think it's open to question, but certainly the gates would be opening to some sort of an Arctic plunge. So, is there a signal for a colder pattern to become established and continue through the second week of a forecast period? Well, as usual, I'll take a look at the ensemble data now to try and identify the probabilities. Beginning with the 16-day GEFS plot for London and southeastern England, 
across the top, it shows upper air temperatures. And look at this, for a change, the thick black line, the 30-year norm, it's above most of the individual runs in the ensemble throughout the second week, suggesting quite a high degree of confidence in upper air temperatures being below average. It's not a given, if you see here, several of the runs do bring milder air back, one or two going up towards plus eight Celsius, plus nine Celsius. Remember these values are at 1500 meters above sea level approximately. That would suggest much milder air returning. Nonetheless, the majority are pointing towards cooler than average conditions. In terms of rainfall, well, across the bottom, the number of spikes there decreases uh, towards the end of the first week. There are some continuing to appear, but it doesn't look particularly wet. Probably showers, maybe still the risk of longer spells of rain, according to some of the ensemble runs, but generally not a very wet picture. Snowfall, well, across the very bottom is the snow row. That shows the number of runs in the ensemble forecasting snow on a particular day. The maximum value is 33. What does it reach in London and southeastern England? Well, around the 7th or the 8th of November, it gets up to 3. So that's 3 out of 33, something like a, a, a 1 in 10, 1 in 11 chance of snow falling, not even necessarily accumulating. It could just be a few flakes mixed into a shower. A low risk in the south, not completely out of the question, but still unlikely. Jumping up to uh, Glasgow to take a look at the view in the northwest. I won't focus on upper air temperatures too much here because it's a similar pattern through week two. It's below average. Good consistency there. Still not completely a given because a few of the runs do bring milder air back, but most are keeping it rather chilly. The snow row, is that looking more promising? Well, there's not a great deal of difference. Values once again are reaching a maximum of three, although that occurs on two days rather than one day. Nonetheless, it is suggesting a low risk of snow, um, even here in the northwest. Where can we expect snow? Probably no surprises. Here's the same plot for Cairngorm. And the snow row now, the values here are much more healthy if you're hoping to see snow. 16, 25, 25, staying in double figures through much of the second week. Therefore, it's more or less a given, according to the GEFS, there will be snow falling over the Scottish mountains, probably accumulating too, as it happens, but that's not told by the snow row figures. But as you head to lower ground and move southwards, the risk of snow decreases markedly. As I say, though, it's not out of a question that there could be some wintry showers over lower ground in Scotland through the second week. I don't think Glasgow is a favoured location, being close to the western coast there. It's more likely to be further inland, where the risk of it is greater. With those below average upper air temperatures, what sorts of values can we expect down at the ground level? Well, the 16-day GEFS data table here gives some clues. It shows forecast maximum temperatures for London and the southeast of England from all of the runs in the ensemble. Each column represents a particular day. Looking at the second week, the columns are predominantly made up of this light green shading, which is used to indicate runs forecasting between 6 and 10 Celsius. There is still some yellow, in fact it increases for a time before dipping away. Those are milder runs, 11 to 15 Celsius maximums, indicating that, as I suggested, a milder scenario is still a possibility. It's not out of the question by any means. Those yellow runs, 35-42% on some days, so it's a reasonable chance still of it being milder at least in the south. Going up to the northwest to Glasgow, and here there are some differences. The columns are mostly made up of the light greens, the 6 to 10 Celsius runs, but there's more dark green. That's used to indicate runs forecasting maximums between 1 and 5. There's less yellow, there's still a little bit, so there are fewer runs bringing in milder conditions here. Generally it looks like a colder picture as you head northwards, 
really that's what you would expect when the source of the cold is the Arctic. It's obviously got to cross the northern half of the UK first before it reaches the south. Different in the winter months, for example, when there's a continental easterly or southeasterly feed. Looking at the temperature anomalies, on a given day, I've picked out bonfire night here, Friday the 5th of November. Blue shading across much of Western Europe, including the UK, is suggesting a negative anomaly colder than the 1981-2010 average. I don't know whether it's just my perception, but it seems to be that in many recent years, bonfire night's been mild, overcast, drizzly or wet, not cold and crisp. Perhaps, perhaps it's still far too early to be confident about this, but maybe this year things will be different. At least if this data is on the money, it would suggest an increased likelihood of colder, quite possibly drier conditions on fireworks night. What sort of pattern could lead to that? Well, I've been focusing on the cold moving down from the north and this pressure anomaly chart from the GEFS supports the idea. It's for days 10 to 15. The yellows and oranges out to the west here indicating a positive anomaly. The blues a negative one to our east. So higher than average pressure, lower than average pressure there over uh, Scandinavia and continental Europe, leaving the UK potentially under a northerly flow of sorts. All ties in quite nicely with the other data which I've used. It concluding therefore, it suggests that the second week could well be colder than average, at least that's what most of the data is pointing towards at the moment. So to summarise the 14 days, week one it begins very mild with heavy rain in the northwest and the west, elsewhere it will be drier. But the unsettled conditions extend across all areas between the 30th, and, uh, 30th of the 10th and the 1st of the 11th, could become windy as well for a time. Towards the end of the week it may well begin to turn colder in the north. Week two, the colder conditions probably spread southwards across all regions, at least for a time. Showers are most likely in the north and the east. They could well fall as snow over northern hills and possibly at times to low levels in parts of Scotland. There is a risk of frost, especially in the north, but in sheltered areas further south it could also be uh, cold enough at times for frost. Despite that, a milder scenario remains possible, especially in southern regions. I think it's probably about 30%, 40%. On balance though, the colder scenario is considered more likely at the moment. There we have it. Possibly something colder and more wintry on the way. I don't really think snow is a big feature, apart from on the Scottish mountains. Nonetheless, there is that indication at this stage that bonfire night could be cold and crisp. I wouldn't guarantee it at this stage, though, not by any means. It could still change significantly. That milder scenario may win out. Anyway, thank you for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. As ever, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thanks now. Bye.